Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are doing another Circle of Life Monster Mash. So you guys really liked the last one, which we did the Savannah Biome Food Chain Monster Mash type of thing, but this time I wanted to do something to kind of match the season. So right now it is winter here in Arizona, so I thought why not do a Tundra Monster Mash? I know I don't live in the Tundra, but I thought winter, snow time, we might as well do something in a snowy environment, so I thought, why not the tundra? And tundra was probably one of the most commented one. There was that in like ocean, and I think I'll do an ocean one next, but you know, I really wanted to do the tundra. So I found this tundra food chain online, and we have a lot of different options in terms of where this could go, but a lot of them kind of feed into each other, so we're gonna have to kind of play it by ear and figure out how we're going to do this. But let's go ahead and first start out with the producer. So we have the lichen, moss, sedge, grass, and shrub, and we have our random number generator. So let's see what we get. Okay, and we got two, so we got a moss. All right, so for mosk, the ones that eat mosk are the musk ox, and the grass is also for the musk ox. So none of the other creatures eat moss. So all we have is musk ox, so we don't have to do a random number generator for that one. And then from the musk ox, from there, it looks like the only predator on this list is the Arctic Wolf. So we actually don't have to do two other random number generators because at least on this one specifically, the musk ox leads directly into the Arctic Wolf and then the other lines lead to other prey animals. So we're just gonna do a moss combined with a musk ox and a Arctic Wolf. I am going to mess up musk ox at least a few times in this video, so be patient with me because it's really hard for me to say fast. So let's go ahead and jump in and do some sketches and get this creature started. Before we jump into the monster, I wanted to let you guys know that I've dropped two new t-shirt designs. The first one is the Cthulhu, and then the other one is the Griffin of the Stars. These are all over prints, and I'm super proud of them. So if you guys got Christmas money to spend, go check it out at teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash kmckeg. So at first I kind of struggled with what I wanted to do with this character. I kept going back and forth on I guess what aspects to combine. I still feel sometimes I struggle with uh, making a cohesive creature. Like sometimes I feel I just kind of slap pieces together. And that first sketch, the way I was going, I really felt like I was falling into that. So I decided, you know, let's go balls to the walls, as far diverse as possible, who cares what it is. And I decided to start figuring out a bipedal creature. I was really inspired by the idea of like Bigfoot. I talk about it more in a little bit, um, but just kind of this larger mysterious creature. And I think it also had a little bit of aspects like Beauty and the Beast, Beast-esque type of creature. It has these cool horns. It's this big, uh, larger hunched over creature and was just kind of a combination of a lot of different animals. But I felt this one looked really cohesive and I was really excited after I drew this one. I just really liked it right off the bat, but I wanted to explore a couple other options or at least one more to kind of see what other things I could think of for this creature. So I was like, all right, let's try to do the quadruped and see what I like about it, what I don't like about it. So I pieced together kind of where I was going with the first sketch, but I tried to make it a little more cohesive, a little more interesting, give it a better uh, profile, and I do like aspects about this one, but for me, that bipedal really took the cake for these rough sketches. All right, so I have finished the rough sketches and I'm really gravitating towards these two. I think having this more bipedal monster would be really interesting for kind of like, I don't know, I'm getting like Bigfoot, kind of humanoid-like creature that people haven't seen before. Maybe it just really blends into an, its, its environment and hasn't really been captured or documented by humans. I like that idea a lot. And then I also like some of the aspects from my quadruped sketch. For example, I really like the uh, more like rocks growing out of it. I think that could be a really interesting aspect and it would add something for the moss to cling to. I think that's a really cool idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine these two ideas for the final monster execution with the idea in mind of just kind of this more bipedal mysterious monster. I think that would be a really cool aspect to have for this. So let's go ahead and jump in and get this thing started. So, all right, here we go. Let's do the final pose for our giant beastish creature. 
And I wanted this to be a very intimidating, big action pose. Like I wanted him to like really be showing off all of his details, but also just like kind of flailing his arms out kind of in an intimidating manner. Like I imagine this being like a really big roar where he's just opening his chest up and just like really letting out this big roar. I wanted a really cool dynamic pose. And like I said, this is a great one to show off all the details. I got to show where I'm gonna place the rocks and the moss. And it was a good way to show all the aspects of all the animals combined in this creature. I also made sure to make him very broad chested. I was very much inspired by Beast from Beauty and the Beast. I will I acknowledge that for this just because it's this really cool, bipedal creature that has these really cool horns and it just really reminded me of Beast from Beauty and the Beast. So I wanted to do like a similar bipedal humanoid look to this, but still have very monstrous aspects to him. And with all of the uh, sketching done, it was time to jump into line art. And this was the phase where I really was trying to plan out the different textures for this guy. So I knew that I wanted hair and obviously we have the harder rock structure that would be on his chest. And I kind of wanted the horns to also mimic the rock look. So this was a time for me to add texture to it with using the line art and then really build it later with the color. So I've been going back and forth on the lore of this character and I've been trying to decide if I like the idea of it being like, this is like a one type, like one time character, you know, like how the Loch Ness Monster, we probably quote unquote only have one Loch Ness Monster. Um, and like Bigfoot, everyone is like, there's one Bigfoot, um, something like that. I'm trying to decide, would it be a one-off creature or would this be more of a multiple creature? Like this is a, a species that exists in the world. And I'm kind of leaning towards species, but I think it would be a small population species. Like maybe in the past they were hunted down to low extinction levels and there's just a very small population that exists or even maybe not even hunting. It's just maybe humans have expanded into their territory. So maybe they're losing some of the things that they fed on or their different land that they were able to survive in, maybe something like that. And that's making them more rare and rare. Like for example, um, honestly, you guys are gonna think I'm gonna sound conspiracy theorist, but I'm curious what you guys think. So for me, I personally think Bigfoot might be some type of like ape species that we haven't discovered here in North America, maybe, or it's just another type of bear that we just, are mis you know misinterpreting with our photos and such so i could see this being a type of species that maybe just hasn't been discovered yet in the world and that's why there's so much lore behind it and curiosity if this is more of like a bigfoot-esque style creature or it could have also been much more well known like it could have been hunted down or just dwindled in population just because of maybe the food sources changing or so many different factors. So maybe the people before, like back when in my, in my universe of monsters, maybe they uh, knew about these creatures and they were much more abundant, but now with time passing and the world changing, maybe they're just a species that's slowly dying out. And that's why we think they're just such a rare and interesting creature and kind of this mysterious one we don't see very often or they're just really good at blending into the environment. I think it might be a combination of all those things. But I do really want to know what you guys think for lore. Like, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know I want to put this guy in the next creature compendium. And if you guys haven't seen, I made my own 
creature compendium for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. I put um, over 50 monsters in a book and they have like the lore and stats. So you can just drop them right into your Dungeons and Dragons game. I'll put a link for that here, but I'm currently working on a second one and drafting up these monsters with my buddies and we're writing up the lore and the stats and everything. And uh, I, we do read your guys' comments. So if you guys wanna share some lore on any of the monsters that I've made over the past few months, or you know, just anything in general, like make sure to leave it in the comments because we review the videos and kind of take ideas and see what you guys think and maybe incorporate that into our lore. And I think this guy would be a really cool one to develop some more of that mysterious Bigfoot-esque lore or some type of story behind it. Maybe it's more revered as like a really cool God entity by certain people and others it's just an animal. I know there's just so many options with different lores for these creatures. And I think this guy looks super cool. I really love how the coloring turned out. I would also love for like a cool explanation of why he grows moss. Like maybe they have such a sedimentary lifestyle uh, during most of the year that just moss grows on their body. That'd be pretty cool. I don't know. There's so many options for this creature and I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. And we are all done with this monster bash. I really love how this guy turned out and it really gives me these like awesome Bigfoot vibes. Like this is a creature that you might not see super often. It just kind of blends into its surroundings and maybe humans haven't really seen many of them, but I, I love the idea of that type of lore behind it. But if you guys have any cool ideas for lore or attacks or anything you would like to share about this monster, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to see what storytelling aspects you guys brainstorm with this creature. And I think we will call this one done. So thanks again, guys, so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I would love if you hit that subscribe button and leave me a like down below if you like these food chain monster mashes. I'd also love a comment of what biome I should do next for this type of mash. And I can't wait to see what other biomes you guys suggest. There's so many options and I'm really excited to do more of these in the future. So thanks again, guys, for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.